Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joyce Ng. Joyce, hot off the presses. The Golden Globes have just ended. What a show. Um, Big night for Oppie. Five wins. Yeah, the most since La La Land went seven for seven. Hopefully for the team behind Oppenheimer, the end result ends a little better than La La Land. No envelope gate? No. Picture, director, actor. Tough beat for Bradley Cooper. We'll talk about this. Killian Murphy won. Supporting actor, which we love to see, and score, which I would love to see. I loved hearing the Oppenheimer score all night. I was like, hell yeah, this is great. We, we can talk about music cues for winners uh, later on. Yeah. But op- the Oppies, uh music cues were fine. It great. Was- uh, it's five wins. A-, a tough night for Barbie, we'd say. Yeah, like I said on the the live post yes. show, I I don't count the box office cinematic achievement award. Okay, which it won, um, the, deservedly I guess, but that's what the money's for. Duck gift, you know. Uh, so it only won one for song, Billie Eilish, and Phineas. What was I made for? Uh, yeah, not great, Bob. When we were doing our picks. Uh, I had had poor things winning best film, uh, film musical comedy, which you ended up doing as well, which yeah. is great. And then I had poor thing. I ended up, ha- I had Barbie in screenplay and I switched to poor things uh, after we recorded. I was like, I just think it, Barbie's not winning this, especially because I knew like it was obvious that it was going to win that fake award. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so like, they don't need to give it anything else. You still get Greta Gerwig up on stage and Marco Robbie up on stage. And so I was like well, a little down on that it. award sidebar. Like, What's who- that? Who gets to take that award home? Well, the producers, I guess. They accepted it. So they get the Golden Globe. Well, like Margot gave the speech, but like, like does Greta get one too? Because she's not a producer. I don't it. think she gets one. I think just Tom, Margot, and the other producer who I'm forgetting. Robbie? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I knew that was a tough beat. I, I And then it was when Downey won, uh, Robert Downey Jr. won Supporting Actor over Gosling. I was like, that's it. Good night, the lights here uh, on this movie. Winning a lot. Uh. Yeah, so I switched to Poor Things today uh, for comedy musical because I was obviously not moving off of Emma Stone right. for actress. Yeah. And usually the the comedy musical film winner wins a lead award. It usually wins an acting award and it's usually in lead. Like obviously yeah. Green Book won in supporting. Yes for Mahershala and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and supporting for Brad. Um, and then I didn't have Ryan winning, which I know a lot of people did too, you know, but I was like, I'm not going to go to Ryan. So then I was like, I'm just going to go to Poor Things for I- comedy musical. And like you were saying, Barbie was going to win the fake award anyway. It just so. felt like there's no, not that it's not that they're like in collusion with the awards, but I also was like, they're not no. going to give it two awards. They're just not going to give it two best picture awards. Basically. And then also with a, a, like the new expanded membership, like I, I think it's going to take like another year or two for us to really gauge their influence and their tastes, you know, because there's still some of the old members it, it, were, who were not kicked out. <laughs> And then this influx of new international journalists and critics or whoever, you know. And I I, I think you really saw that in some of the, you know, like the anatomy of fall wind. You saw more in the film side than in the TV side. The TV side, which we'll get to if you're watching this and you're like, God, I got to know what Chris and Joyce think of Succession. They never talk about it. Just like fast forward in like another 10, 15, let's be real, like 35 minutes probably uh, from now. Um, But in film, I was like, I think they're not much different uh, than than they were in terms of the taste, because none of the win all of the winners felt like this would have been the same winners would have gotten like five years ago with the same with the Hollywood Foreign Press. It, it also memo to many winners: Hollywood Foreign Press does not exist anymore. They disbanded, and I've gotten emails about that from the P bar yeah, PR. We, yeah. Uh So Devontae Randolph and Ludwig uh, Goranson and who else said it? The third uh, person. So many people said it, and Kevin Costner tweeted. Yes. uh because he was like he he was like I'm, I'm presenting i'm I'm happy to be here since i couldn't come last year because of the flood never forget regina hall yeah. accepting for him iconic the and best. then he, he thanked the hollywood forum press i'm like oh. next year next year that they're gonna sort, sort all that out next year uh yeah. but it didn't feel like a lot of the it just felt like all the winners were right in line with what would have happened like yeah they're still year. like like anatomy of a fall is still a very globesy pick for screenplay but I think you you saw that um, 
that that it was not like a consensus pick like uh like Barbie was right. you know like they didn't go for that in screenplay so no. and I, the globes in, in the globes matter in terms of what a show and all these famous people were there and it was a great time had by all and Joe Coy hopefully does not have a Google alert set up for his name or follow is not Twitter searching himself um but I would say they don't matter though in terms of like what wins the Oscars, except they do in terms of like people like you get to gauge the room and see what people like. And I was just watching tonight and I was like, you were saying for months, you're like, I think Barbie's like Black Panther plus maybe. And I'm like, I think you're right. Maybe I really do. So in production design and costume design and a music category song. And so it wins three Oscars. And then I guess the question would be how many nominations does it get? I still think it'll get a lot of more. I think it'll get more nominations than Black Panther, but I think it could miss like, I mean, Margot Robbie's obviously one that people have been like, not totally sold on. I still have her in. I think she'll get it at SAG. But I'm like, I could see her missing, even though for like Greta Lee, I guess at this point, I don't know who else would be in that fourth spot or Annette Benning, maybe. I'm not sure about that though. Um, I could see her missing. I think Gosling is obviously safe. I think Greta is also safe, but I could see her missing too. It's a very competitive category. Yeah, I I don't really see it winning an above the line category at the Oscars. And I know some people since Barbie, I guess we haven't talked about this on air since Barbie yes. was moved to adapted by the Oscars as expected based on like how consistent they are in their definition of adapted screenplays. I, I understand the point and I don't disagree, but based on past history, it would be where it is. It should be adapted. I yeah. don't think it's, it's not wrong to say it's original, but it's I, an original story, but like they're consistent and they've their... been like that. I mean, uh, so apologies to like Judd Apatow, but I think it it's, makes it's also not insulting to be an adapted screenplay. Um, I didn't have when it moved to adapted. I did not put it in first. Let's say I just kept Oppenheimer there, uh, where it belongs in first place, <laughs> uh, and I think it will win. And for screenplay in original, you and I, I went to holdovers until twenty minutes ago, and then I put Anatomy of Fall in first because it's I think. Tonight. I think Anatomy of Fall uh, will probably win BAFTA in that category, I think. And it could easily win at the Oscars. And people, like we've said, that is a beloved consensus movie. The That IndieWire director thing, every one of them was like, Anatomy of Fall is the best. And then the night, tonight when it won, uh, when, when it won uh, screenplay, man, people were thrilled. And like standing O's, the, people were very excited for Justine Trier. Two great uh, speeches from Justine Trier. It also won uh, non-English film which it cannot win at the oscars because not submitted by france yeah i really really i i have a hard i actually think we talked about this i think we talked about this back in march when i didn't have holdovers in because i was like alexander Payne didn't write it so you had it in but i'm like i almost think because he didn't write it it won't win screenplay and i think she could win screenplay uh with her her partner but i don't think that matters because i think a lot of people still think he wrote it i still see like tweets today thinking that alexander payne wrote the holdovers and we know he just directed it uh, but i i think that's a really competitive category because you're basically going to have uh, anatomy fall past lives and holdovers there's three best picture nominees and probably may december i have in there and i put salt burn in as my fifth because of the because bath performance it. and i, I love the movie I, it's great i think i put an air <laughs> I, I think those are like the next in line, I think Saltburn will actually make it in to the consternation. I can, I can see Saltburn make it in because there's usually a, a lone screenplay nominee anyway. Yeah, and she's a past winner, obviously, and like so, it'll help. Yeah, um, uh, but I do think it could. Do you think it could win screenplay? Do you have What do you have? In, you have held over still, I would imagine. But do I you, still have holdovers at the Oscars. What I've, did you put in? I've second? had it this whole time, so I yeah. didn't. I know a lot of people have Barbie winning. Uh, right, I had Barbie winning, but what did you put in second then? Um, I don't know. I probably still have anatomy. I don't I don't really pay attention to I think, I think anatomy could win. And and tonight just again, it doesn't mean anything, but it means to me like watching the room. And I was like, man, people love anatomy of the fall. Just more confirmation. I'm I'm also happy it it won something big because yes. I feel like even though I I feel like the film is beloved um based on everyone I've talked to who's seen it. Yeah. Right. But it hasn't really broken out that way in like culturally, you know, and then like on the critic circuit, when wise, it hasn't really won a ton 
outside of you know non-english film foreign language film or whatever and we've talked about you know how sandra holler has not won a lot either she won national society over the weekend yeah so great and uh yeah and like justine trey is not getting a lot of directing nominations and the screenplay has not won a lot either so it was nice to see it win something big and televised you know we we like to say that the Critics' Choice Awards will immediately rubber stamp whatever we just saw tonight. But it, it can't. So what do you think Anatomy Fall can win there? Um, what will they give it? I like it, I mean it, it can't give it screenplay because it's no, not I know. nominated there. I know. So I know. I I don't like I don't think it'll get like they'll just give it to Lily, and um. Like it'll just give it international. You That's know? it, just the one, and they won't give like, it. What probably else, what else can I give it? Milo could win instead. I have Dominic winning there. But that's like that's a fake category. I know. I that's... don't count these like extraneous. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Well, I'm just saying. Like, I'm sure somebody at the Critics Choice Awards is probably making. Let's recount the votes and see if we can get an Emmy. I mean, I'm looking at like what else it's nominated for for screenplay. Um, it's, it's not nominated in screenplay, so it's it's the just other thing. Extra... Uh, milo that's and it it's got the language yeah. yeah uh the other thing tonight i felt like clarified not that any not a total shock but i mean devondre randolph divine joy randolph obviously winning it's like just that's it lock it up biggest lock of the season i i honestly i i feel like we've seen the acting winners and they'll just sweep too do you think the that's a, that was my next question? I actually think this is a sweeping. These are all going to win everything. Yeah, I think we could see another twenty twenty because I, I like I think Devon set. I think RDJ can also sweep. Uh, I, so let's start with him because he was the second winner. Like I said, I was like torn on what I we predicted RDJ, but I was like really Gosling could win, and then RDJ won, and it was like no shit. And he gave this like great raconteur RDJ speech. And I was and like, also printed and just giant font, all caps. I, I need to know what font he used. What Robert, prescription is he have? If you're, if you're listening to this, please post your speech on Instagram. <laughs> uh, yeah, watching him win, I was just like, he is obviously going to win every award. There's no way he would lose at SAG in my well, mind. We've also talked about how, um, you know, he's just so charming and, and you know, such Hollywood. an extrovert. Yeah. Like, I and love him and Killian together because Killian is like me, a total introvert. And mm -hmm. like, you need to be next to an extrovert right. for a good time. And, and they're just perfect together. And like, that was a great speech, even it, though it was like written down. You know, like, Davon also had a written down speech. Um, Like, I, it was heartfelt, but like, Robert's just was a lot more engaging and funny and like he just wants to work the room you know he's a pro at this i would so be, yeah and we were waiting for him to start winning televised awards and then yeah. he won this one and i was like yeah he's just gonna win everything like i just have a hard time believing he'll lose do you even think he would lose at bafta no i i think he can win that like if he feels more like a bafta pick than ryan yes and so... critics choice i think would be ryan's last stand probably yeah, I guess like he can lose that to Ryan. But so. I don't even think he will. No, because like they they're voting right now, so like. So I think Downey's a sweeper, and then I guess the best actor now is. I mean, we were talking about this so, when we did our picks. Yes, so Killian won. Uh, thrilled. Also a great speech. Great, it, amazing opening. My probably my second favorite speech after Kieran Culkin. So, but yeah, we talked about this last week with our predictions and i said i i think even if bradley wins bradley cooper wins he might not win the oscar um and but like if killian wins like i think he can sweep and win the oscar so i think he will just sweep <laughs> we i really i think if you were holding on to holding on for dear life for bradley winning i think tonight was a, a tough loss i would say yeah like that that was really tight that race or maybe not even at all i mean i don't know we don't know but right. just from the outside perspective um but like the Kill killian's win makes sense and that's just like the film itself is just more embraced and beloved and more successful in so many ways like i think there's a lot of good things about maestro but yeah 
it's it's not beloved it's divisive that was that was another thing tonight i was like man you know what movie fucking rules is oppenheimer and you know who thinks it rules everyone in that room everyone loved it they were just like yes yeah and i never i also never understood the knock on killian's performance uh, as like not being emotional enough like it's not scenery chewing right but you still feel emotionally connected to robert oppenheimer and what he goes through and you understand the turmoil within him um and and the guilt he feels you know in the second half of the film and then that's really kind of been the like the general public's reaction or lack thereof since maestro hit netflix like they feel like they can't connect to leonard bernstein in the film and they don't come out of it with a deeper understanding of the character you know it keep it really keeps you at an arm's length the film sometimes i think you were saying about the general public sometimes i look at these winners and i'm just like it would if you talk to your normie friend who didn't know anything about anything and you were like yeah killian murphy won an oscar for oppenheimer they'd be like yeah no shit and if you were like oh robert downey jr won an oscar for oppenheimer and or, who was his competition ryan gosling for barbie well no shit he's not gonna win or robert downey jr would win and like Lily Gladstone. Oh yeah, she was great. I think she's going to win. I just feel like it's just like the obvious thing sometimes just happens. And I think if you were like, Kelly Murphy's going to win an Oscar, people would be like, yeah, of course he is. Yeah. I mean, can I can I read you uh, my friend's dad's review of Maestro? Yes, I would love to hear this. So he, he saw Oppenheimer in the summer, obviously. You know, Barbenheimer loved it. And he is uh, an atomic bomb connoisseur. So he has all the books. It's a big dad, dad thing. Yeah. That's a dad thing. Yeah, including American Prometheus. So he sure. loved Oppy and Killian. So this is his review of Maestro. Um, like from my friend. They paused it 30 minutes in and said, quote, is this as bad as we think it is? Oh, God. And then he said, Bradley wrote some, quote, pretty bad stuff, end quote. And then her dad did not like how little of Bernstein's life was actually covered. And she explained that it's not a biopic, which, you know, is like the the joke of the and, season. And, and Netflix Angel gets its wings. Yes. Uh. And then her dad said, Terry gave a good performance, but he did not care for the movie. And oh, yeah, that's I think that's the norm that we've talked about this. That's the normie response. Yes. And then here's 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 the the money yeah. quote. Lots of people made movies just to get Oscars, but this isn't one of them. Wow. I told. Yeah. That's a better joke than Joe Coy should hire uh, your friend's dad to be a writer. I think you get more mileage out of the punchlines. Probably. And, and you know what, uh, you know, I think that it, that that's a, 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 a good burn. And then Joe Coy would have to find other people to blame for his jokes. Not other writers. Yeah. Other writers. Yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced, I guess, of the acting winners. I, I, we didn't even mention Lily Gladstone. She won, gave her customary great speech. I saw her give a great speech at the New York Film Critics Circle dinner last week, Joyce. Uh, she's great, giving speeches, and people love her. Because, like, we know this. And it's, she's going to win. Perfect. Yeah. So Lily and Divine, congratulations. Probably Robert Downey Jr. The best actor I still think is a little, I guess, of the four, I do think Killian will win now. <laughs> But I really still think Paul Giamatti can make a run and Holdovers is pretty beloved. I would say right now. So I have had Killian in first since yes. I saw Oppenheimer. I, yes. I I never put Bradley in first. I did. Now I I'm going to move Bradley down from second to third. Yes. So I have Bradley in third now also. I, and I moved Killian into first and I have Paul in second. Yeah, I'm going to move Paul from third to second. So I think there's a world where Paul can win. He's a beloved veteran, obviously. Everybody loves Paul Giamatti. Like you, I, you either mentioned it here or on, when we did the live thing earlier, that his speech was great. What a wonderful speech. Great speech. Um, funny, heartfelt. He shouted out uh, Boston. Uh, I can't believe they didn't cut to Matt and Ben when he shouted out Boston. Ridiculous. They, I got to say, I loved, I thought the show was not, I, I, the host accepted. I thought the show itself was pretty solid from an award yeah. show standpoint. Mm -hmm. But I will say I missed, uh, they did not show, they showed Taylor once and she gave a dirty look to Joe Coy and then never again. And then- uh, Well, she, they showed her a few times in the bumpers, like when she was taking a selfie yes. with a little hater, so. But not, not like in there. And Matt and Ben, 
I did not think got enough shine because they were right there at that great table. And I'm like, who doesn't want to see those guys hanging out with Jennifer Lopez? I bet you they were having a freaking blast. Did you did you see, I think it was on THR, like before the show started, like uh, Matt was sitting there with his wife, Lucy, and then Ben just strolls up and yes. sits down next to him. That great. was adorable. I love it so much. They're just such good. I love the I love the whole thing. I'm way in on this, uh, the friendship for decades I've been on it, and I just love it still. Um, but yeah, I guess of the so I could see Paul winning. I could see him winning SAG, but also like, of course, Kelly Murphy wins SAG because Oppenheimer is the biggest movie and everybody's seen it and they love it. So like, why wouldn't he win SAG? Yeah, and I I mean, we haven't talked about this since it happened on Friday, but back to long list. Yes. Prop Friday. Yeah. And uh, I did my picks. I don't have Paul Giamatti getting a BAFTA nomination. I don't know if I did. I don't know if I do or not. Let me look. I hastily did them. I'm going to look later. Do I have him in? Let because me... I don't think I don't think he was top three because top three a uh, popular vote automatically get in and then three picks from the jury. So I don't think he's top three. Whereas Killian Wolf for, is for sure top three. So who do you have getting in a bat? I do have him in. Do you have Barry in? No. So I have, you're making me go back there. Okay. Uh, here's who I have. It'll help you. Maybe you don't even have to look. I'll just, I have Killian, Bradley, Paul, Leonardo, DiCaprio, Jeffrey Wright, and Andrew Scott. Um, I have, oh wait, this is like a banner here. I have Killian, Leo, Bradley, Andrew Scott, Tail You, and Jeffrey Wright. So yeah. I you think tail top you three of, yeah. it, are Killian, Leo, and Bradley. Right. And then the other three are jury picks. Right. I could see that happening. I actually think Andrew, well, you think Andrew would just be a jury pick. I, I was debating that. I was like, is Andrew be- top three or not? But then I was like, because I think the thing we have to ask with BAFTA too is like, if someone is not top three or like, or if someone is top three, would they also be a jury pick? And I feel like Andrew would also be a jury pick, even if he were top three. I mean, I could see uh, Teo getting in for sure, but I don't know. I, I think Paul would get in. People, I think everyone loves him. The movie did not do poorly. It got like Dominic got in on the list too. No, but Dominic could also have been a jury save. So maybe, yeah. You have him getting but, in. Um, Dominic, supporting actor. I do. I so have that, a, that one. People were mad because Charles Melton did not make it. I have uh, him and Jacob rounding out my other three of. Because uh, you uh, love Saltburn, and they loved it too. I, I'm I'm Bafta is my people, Joyce. They uh they knew it. I mean, up. that's such a Bafta movie. It was so obvious it was gonna overperform there. For I, I supporting, I have Downey, Gosling, Ruffalo, De Niro, Dominic Sessa, and Jacob Elordi. I have oh, Downey, Ryan, Ruffalo, Anthony Hopkins, Dominic, nice. and Paul Mescal. Nice. So you left out Jacob and De Niro. Yes. I would like that's another one where I'm like was. De Niro or Ruffalo in top three? That's actually a good point. De Niro probably would not be top three. So maybe I'll bump him out and put somebody else in for fun. I mean, like, Killers did really well. I had 15 mentions. I don't think he would be top three, so, though. Yeah, it's like you have to, I have to decide, like, who's top three. I'm actually going to do this right now. I'm putting Jamie Bell in instead of Paul Mescal. I just think Jamie Bell is better than Paul Mescal in that movie. He just was. <laughs> like, he's I so mean, good. I agree, but I don't and I think they'll have taste, maybe. Uh, I'm putting Jamie Bell in uh but yeah but anyway my point was like if if paul giamatti doesn't get a bafta nomination that's another opportunity for killian murphy to win and give a speech right uh so killian sweeping then maybe unless I i think i think today actually was the trickiest for him yeah because it does feel like it would be him because it's such a popular movie yes and then also again like with the SAG AFTRA voting, it's AFTRA too. It's not just actors and just based on the general public's response to Maestro. I feel like it would lean more towards Killian now. And like I think like yes, like everything on paper seems like a very baity role for Bradley Cooper and Maestro, but it's just not landing with people in the way you would expect it to. So Yeah. I mean I don't think I definitely don't think he'll win in SAG. I mean, I would we're going to Paul... do our SAG predictions at the end yeah. of this. We'll, because we'll wait nominations then. Are I know, we'll wait then. But I don't think he would win SAG, so. 
Yeah. Uh, and then with Lily, I think she's just going to sweep, like you said. So, so for uh, all the acting winners sweep, Nolan feels like really locked in at director. Yeah. And that was a good speech too. Um, obviously he, he gave a, a much more a funny speech at the New York dinner last week. Which is still the, generating content. I saw backstage. Well, yeah. Cause the instructor, you know, extended it. Not really an olive branch. Cause she didn't apologize for her. Which I loved. I love that. Like stand your ground girl. I, I like Tenet. So, it's a great yeah. movie, but I don't care if people don't like it. She yeah, should say yeah, that. You should have your, like, that's your opinion and you, you get to stick by it. So, but she invited him for a live class. He's never going to do it, but I, 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 I love this whole story. Apparently he was asked about it today, like literally backstage of the Globes. And he said, uh, nothing but love for Peloton. He's never taking that class again. I might just skip it for a little while, but thank you for the concern. <laughs> that's what he said. Uh, so he's winning Oppenheimer winning best picture though. I could see people being like poor things. Maybe I don't think that's winning best picture no no what do you think poor things can win people do like it obviously it's gonna get a lot of nominations at the oscars i yeah. think like it's competitive in screenplay so it is but then would it have to be would oppenheimer can Oppenheimer? so let me ask you this can oppenheimer will oppenheimer win best picture and best director and then can poor things win screenplay yeah i don't think oppenheimer needs you don't think it needs it to screen. win best picture it can but i don't think it needs it it could just be like nomadland and maybe it will be so i i, I kind of think especially because he's going to win multiple oscars then anyway it's i mean i i guess it's like i i think i still have it in first but like i think it, get, it could win just like being swept up in it but it's not really thought of as a screen. writing movie but it does you know its narrative is that he wrote in the first person yeah i think poor things could win there because it's like a beloved movie if it ends up being like a beloved movie like we think it is uh it could and, and it's obviously competitive in uh costume and production design although i have barbie winning those currently i kind of think it could do you think like i think it could split those with barbie i think it would win costumes i mean i'm sorry i think it could win po costumes over barbie even though i think the barbie costumes are great and i think barbie production design really should win because i think it's like really creative um but i think poor things can win visual effects like we've been talking about yeah i have that in first just because it's it's gonna be the biggest best picture contender yeah. so um and then definitely like, like, yeah. it, it's like I think it's second in makeup behind Maestro. I don't know. What if it wins makeup over Maestro? I think it could win makeup. I also think it's second in score uh, ahead of Flower Moon. Um, maybe. I think I would still do Flower Moon in second. Just the reason is uh, because it's. I think it's more instantly recognizable music. I think that matters. The Flower Moon, the one cue that Robbie did is amazing. But then the rest of the score is like not as like not it's not bad. I think it's great, but it's not as like catchy, maybe. Yeah, but like last year, all quiet one with the same three notes. With the one note. But that was a great note. They love the note. I think people remember like the fuck the broken piano sound. Like it's so deranged for poor things. But I don't think it's gonna matter because uh, Oppenheimer will win. Anything else on, on movies, Joyce? We didn't talk about uh, animated boy and the heron one. Over Spider Verse. I know. So the other thing. So today, I was contemplating three changes. Yeah. And I only made one, and the other two were moving to Killian and moving to Boy and the Heron. So I would have gotten two more correct if I had just done it. <laughs> Should have done but, it. Yeah, I know. Uh, not surprised. So. I know. Now I've not been. The, I'm not the biggest fan of Spider Verse. Love the first movie. The second I like, one. I prefer the first one. Second one's fine. Looking forward to the third one. A lot of nice elements in the second one. Not sure it deserves to win based on the competition, and maybe it won't. Maybe they'll ding it for being half a movie, and then it wins next time around for the finale. This is the two towers of Spider Verse, even though it won already. I, I mean, I'm not like again. I'm not shocked uh, it lost here, but like with the Oscars, or they they can be so lazy in that category. They can, so but there it's, is it's like it's like when they gave it to Toy Story Four. Yeah, like there but, were better options. Certainly, but it does seem like they're very into like. I almost feel like it's like when Ennio Mor Morricone won for a Hateful Eight score, right? Or just like 
just like Miyazaki, like this incredibly accomplished. Uh, I love that. Like no one even showed up. Like they don't show up at all. The New York <laughs> Film Critic Circle. It's planned. They sent in an iPhone video. You know, basically, it was like, okay, yeah. Miyazaki didn't do it. It was one of the producers. Uh, I think he could win at at the Oscars. Um, so I mean, it would it would be a great win. Um, because I I do think it's better than Spider Verse, but I don't trust the whole membership of the oscars to do the right thing what uh yeah i don't know I'm, i might i might move to it because i just think i don't think spider versus is just, it, it's not as it's not not it's not strong it's just not as much of like a sure thing as like the first one was the first one felt like a sure thing because it was oh so- no i agree um but again but you can say the same thing about toy story 4 right you know like it was still what was nominated that year when Toy Story? Was like, uh, across the Spider Verse was still a huge hit and still very well received critically. You know, mm-hmm. so it's not like it took a dip in that regard either. So I'm looking at what was nominated the year Toy Story four one. Hang on. Oh, it was like Klaus. Yeah, How to Train Your Dragon three or four. Uh, I lost my body. Klaus and Missing Link. So yeah, not the hottest, Link, not the hottest Link year. Won the globe. Not the hottest year. But year I mean, I, I love Klaus. Klaus won the BAFTA. Um and Missing Link won the globe. So uh anything else on the film choice before we go to TV? Did we forget anything? Um we'll do our sag picks and we'll still talk about this stuff in a little I, while. I don't think so i don't know we, we we said billy one song not surprising so no. yeah so uh tv uh you got perfect score congratulations i did thank you so much i did not i had mistakes mistakes were made i switched to out of kieran we did our picks i had kieran i switched to pedro pascal did you did you switch to pedro because of creative arts which have like nothing to do with the globes only because I was like, it's just the potential for vote splitting between those succession guys is so strong. I think that I just was like, maybe he'll win. I just had the, I'm like, man, Pedro because out winning at the Golden Globes just felt like a thing that would happen to me, but it wasn't. Uh, so I lost that one. Uh, what else did I have? I had James Marsden for supporting actor, but I had that when we did our picks and that was obviously proven wrong. And who else did I miss? I forget. I had one more miss. Oh, you didn't, you didn't have Ricky Gervais. Right. No, I had Chris Rock. There you go. And you had Ricky Gervais. I had Ricky. I just, I never even thought about that category again after I filled it out December 11th because I was like, who cares? But I think like Chris Rock is a very, or or like he's more embraced in the US than internationally, whereas it's the other way around with Ricky. And, you know, he's won Globes before. He's hosted the Globes before. And they like him there, like, and not all of the old membership is gone, right? You know, I so. I also uh, the rocks. We I mentioned this when we did it. I didn't think the Chris Rock special was particularly great. It's perfectly fine. I don't I'm not a big comedy guy, and I didn't even watch those. Other I didn't watch any of these. So. But I'm just saying, like in terms of like Chris Rock being like the overwhelming favorite or like a total obvious winner. Just having watched it, I don't think that's true. So maybe I should have gone off it, but I just. I mean, I should have just not. But you got you got an extra category correct because you switched to Elizabeth the Bicky because of me. I did. So that was nice. Yeah. That but also me. we we got a great Elizabeth the Bicky jump scare when, when they, they just blurted out her name. Her name too early for the nominees. <laughs> uh, big night for Succession. Not surprising. And Beef and the Bear. Those are the only three shows that really mattered. Yeah. Um. As expected, they all won series. I don't think anyone was wavering on them winning series. It was no. just like could they lose an acting category, um, and they didn't unless you were counting uh supporting actress Jace Smith Cameron. But I wasn't right. expecting one. So, um, but yeah. So Succession won four, and it it has a perfect record in drama series because it wasn't nominated in for season mm-hmm. one. So it's three for three. It's that's the record wins in the category with the uh, Mad Men and X Files, but both of those sh- shows lost. So Succession has the edge there. And then Kieran winning drama actor, Succession is now the second show after NYPD Blue to have three different winners in the category, which is cool. Very cool. That just can't happen at the Emmys, unfortunately. 
So this is one way the Globes are better than the Emmys. I mean, these are great winners. I, I was, I guess I'm still like, in terms of, I, I don't know what else. Is, I mean, like, I, my big question to this was, where did they have Jesse Armstrong sitting? I didn't even think he was there. And then he showed up at the end and he was all- Well, you know, they, they always treat, tv as the stepchild so they're always in the second tier in the back yeah but the, the show wasn't all the actors were in the first tier it's yeah because they're the actors jesse and so, like, Nick Braun. Still, they, they put like film people first like film yeah. the film people are front row yeah and then like you fill it, it out yeah and jesse then, and nick braun were in like steerage class yeah so um, um but yeah so one that and then sarah won actress so she She's the only succession actor with multiple globes because she went in supporting two years ago. And then Matthew won supporting actor. Watching uh, it, I guess, again, I, obviously the Emmys voting happened six months ago because they delayed it so long. Not six months, but, you know, four months. Five months. Five, five months. months. You're so bad at this. Uh, <laughs> August it was, right? August, September, yeah. October, November, December, January. Five months. Sorry, fuck it. But uh, it's late, Joyce. I'm tired. I'm going to throw my writers under the bus like Joe Coy. Writers fucked up. You need um, executives to write stuff for you right now. <laughs> but um, in terms of success, I just was like watching The Room again. I was like, oh, I mean, obviously Succession is like beloved, but I, people really love Sarah. So I was like, I'm like all in on her winning. I'm still torn on actor at the Emmys just based on how the Creative Arts Emmys, like the how they vote like there i felt like there was vote splitting for succession a little and maybe that would happen again when the actors and pedro pascal wins best actor but also everyone loves kieran it seems so i don't know i'm torn is what i'm saying yeah we're gonna do our yeah I mean, we don't have to talk about this i guess yeah but in two days yeah so. and then but you still have another week to change them sure <laughs> so. uh Love the beef wins. Thought the bear winning was great. IO winning was awesome. I'll be curious to see. I guess the other thing I was thinking of in terms of the Globes versus the Emmys is like that for season two, which we loved. Season two was great. And season one was not as good as season two, but still great for the bear. And how will they do in season when they win Emmys for season one? Will they win Emmys? I guess. Will IO win an Emmy for season one? Will IO win an Emmy in supporting for season one next week? that i literally i was like i don't know i i think so but maybe not i don't know it's i mean the other thing with that is they so like we said they they voted as scheduled in august yeah. um and august was just two months after season two dropped so they could and everybody just, loves season they two. could have been in the afterglow of season two um and it also did well at creative arts and one casting yeah you know um, i had jury duty for casting what did you have i had that too so yeah. uh and so yeah so the bear won and yeah one of the sound categories um so it's like it's like teed up to do really well i i don't know if they'll win series at the emmys i i still don't think so based on how ted ted did pretty well too not as well but it did okay ted ted won guest actor for sam richardson and song for ed sheeran yeah. I think that shows that it's, I mean, Sam was like, I mean, our, whatever it was, he was not, he was a long shot to win based on the odds. I think he was, and you know what? I feel, I feel like, like I fucked up and I should have predicted him because I predicted him for the nomination when no one was predicting for the nomination. So I should have just gone all in with the win. It's, I feel like maybe the bear guys split themselves. Oliver well, Blatt and John Bernthal. Possibly. I was also thinking, that's funny. Cause I was like, I had Becky and Baker winning. I knew Ted. I felt like Ted was definitely you picked the wrong win. Ted person. I just picked the wrong category because I was like, I really do think it's going to win one of these guest categories because they liked it. They did like the show. And so like, yeah, we know they like it's gone. It's most nominations ever. So I think it's going to, I still think it's going to win series and I still think it could win at least one other award. We'll do again. We'll do our Olympics later. I think it can win maybe two an addition, but we'll see. Yeah. So yeah, you picked the wrong Ted category because she lost to do the flight which was a great win in comedy guest actress and i should have just switched to her because i had her in second remember i said i was like i don't think taraji's gonna win well i didn't have her winning either like i knew that she wasn't gonna win it's i know because you switched live but i was like i don't know because i i thought like becky could win too and i just kept taraji but she didn't win uh 
yeah, love the the speeches were great because all our succession faves got to give them. So I love Matthew. They're all great speeches. Very, Karen. very them. Like Matthew's speech was so Matthew. Sarah, when I, Karen should have just gone up when Sarah called him. <laughs> they should have done. I was actually wishing, like, the one thing I guess about the show and the speeches that, like you said, I thought they were all actually pretty good. Is there wasn't, there weren't any like surprise moments, I guess, in the speech terms or like just flops, which there I would love no to see speeches. too. No, no flop speeches. No. Um, yeah, which and they I were missed. all like like charming in their own ways you know and they were all very prepared even like margo and and uh, uh greta did like a routine yeah so yeah Anything and no one was it? was really no one was played off right i don't remember not really they kept it like pretty tight so do do you think they cut a lot of bits by joe coy i definitely think after uh the the monologue was such a catastrophe that they did cut bits he had nothing I feel like he probably had some like you know in the audience bit or something or... i mean traditionally you would they think usually the host... do that like the host usually has an additional bit or two and also like when they're announcing things there's more banter about like making jokes about one or one-liners about the presenters and instead it was like i have a suit that's made out of velvet i'm like did they just write this joke 30 seconds ago maybe to replace some other joke that was going to be making fun of a uh, name, a famous person who's going to scowl from the audience. I mean, no one laughed at these jokes. They were, they were rough. I mean, I feel bad, um, but they, they were n- not great. When, when then, stuff's happening like that, Joyce, are you cover? Like I was literally like this. I, was hiding my I don't, I just, I don't cover my face. I just don't look at the screen. Like I can hear it, you know, I could not look I like I, I can, I can look at the audience reaction shots, but I can't look at him. I couldn't do it. It was like at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> He's like, cover your eyes. I couldn't do it. <laughs> that that was, I mean, I didn't think Gerard Carmichael was the best last year, but he was better. Wow, this is a great show for Gerard Carmichael. I felt, I felt, because I didn't think he was very good either, but I, I don't know. I mean, just like, this was rough. Yeah, just, um... I know. And that you, you know, things are going well when you know, three minutes in, you have to blame your writers. Three minutes. I, I'm sorry. I only had two weeks to prepare, 10 days to prepare. I was just like, oh, God. And then you start with the obligatory, oh, that movie was so long joke. I mean, come on. The other thing I had, I, again, I don't know. Joe Coy would be very nice, man. I wouldn't want to host this show either. So I'm not like being good. I was just yeah, like, I would never do this. <laughs> you do the Oppenheimer's three hours joke when Flower Moon is sitting right there in three and a half hours. It's longer. How are you doing the Oppenheimer? And also, the other thing that made me laugh out the Oppenheimer joke is it made a billion fucking dollars and nobody I cared know. how long it was. At least like with, you know, the joke that, that was the joke that everyone made with Power of the Dog. It's like, yeah, we don't know how much money it made because it was a Netflix movie. Right? I'm like, this movie was a huge hit. It's like making fun of Titanic. Oh, like, okay, I guess. It was like, on two VHS tapes back in the day. Like, I just couldn't believe that that was the way we went on Oppenheimer. I, I, I don't know. I was just like, not, not great. Uh, anything else, Joyce, before we go to our SAG picks? The show, that was it, the Globes, they're back. Um, they're back. I don't know, any other TV stuff? Like Bear, I mean, nothing surprising there. Beef, nothing surprising. I mean, the a lot of people do not seem to know that Ali Wong and Bill Hader are dating. Very surprising. Yeah, keep up, people, come on. I thought her speech was really great, actually. I love yeah. and, and I love Steven's speech, and I love Beef, and I think it's going to just dominate at the Emmys. I have it winning, like I said, four acting awards, so <laughs> I see no reason why I I don't I know win. which directing or which episode <laughs> to go with in directing. I think it's actually going to vote split and Fleischman is going to win. I'm back on that. I'm You're back on your favorite it. show of 2022. Yeah, because I was just like, I do think, I think for, I we've talked, I mean, like in terms of the Emmys, I do think the vote splitting ends up being real because I think there is always going to, there's not usually a consensus there. Well, the vote splitting well. definitely happens when there are three and Beef only has two. So that's good for it. You can overcome another one. You could overcome for sure. But I do think if you're a fan of Beef, you might like both. The, it might, there might be an even split there among fans. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, should we do SAG now, Joyce? Our SAG predictions? Do you want to do, do film do first or TV? I don't know. Let's there are fewer first. categories in film. Let's do that first. Start with film ensemble, Joyce. Uh, not sure what to do here. So I was just going to do it live because I really don't know. 
uh, what these, to pick. These are being announced on Wednesday, so we're gonna we're gonna do our reactions to that then Wednesday. Yes. So I have an easy top three: Oppenheimer, Barbie, and Flower Moon. That's the top three in the odds. I think that'll happen. Pretty pretty certain that those are the th- those three will get in. Uh, in fourth, I have American Fiction, and I'm not very con- convinced of that at all. It's got a, a tailor made cast to me, and it's a great film. But I'm just not sure. It's like it just feels like there's not enough buzz there. Do you get that feeling? It's it's definitely hasn't broken out big yet, but because it's still in limited release, but yeah. it's it's doing really well in the box office and limited. It, it's a incredibly so, wide. I watched they, it again this past weekend. It's great, and great. um, I, I it, they've been doing a lot of screenings and promo like Core Jefferson. I feel like he has not had a day off since no. TIFF. No, so um, I think it's a matter of getting the if they got the screeners out early to the nomcom because you know you need to be early with sag so that's a tough one so yeah. and that kind of goes with my next one and the final one i have here so i have american fiction i'm, I'm rolling the dice on that i'm not sure it's going to get in and my last one is air it just feels so saggy uh and it's got the greatest I mean, that, that is early for sure and it's very early and everyone has seen it and when i think of an after member i think of a radio producer who is like the five movies I saw this year were Air and then Mission Impossible three times and then uh, Barbie or Oppenheimer. And so I think Air is going to get in. That's basically it. I don't know. I left out poor things because I just don't think of it as an ensemble movie. And I don't think even though it has a good ensemble, I don't think it will be thought of as an ensemble movie, which is maybe stupid. I really wanted to put the holdovers because I think it's actually very watchable. And the fact that it's streaming now it will help it, too. Uh, but I just think it's a three hander and they won't. And I think the other, I think all three actors could get in, but not the movie. Um, and I also thought of Iron Claw, but I just think it's too late. Same with Color Purple. Uh, um, so I, I've, I've had this five for a while, probably since like October, but I'm not sure about the last one. Um, so I have Oppie, Barbie, Flower Moon, of course. I also have American Fiction. I wouldn't say that's locked, but it makes sense to get in. Yeah. So I've had four things in here forever. I never put the color purple in. Yeah. And I know a lot of people had, because as I've said before, like since it was a, a late release, I needed to know if they send out screeners early. I don't know if they did. Truly, I don't know. Um, And it also has not been doing well at all in the box office after it did well for one day, literally one day, Christmas. That's it. Yeah. Um, So I can, I can see it getting in, but I, I can just see it being another West side story and just getting the supporting actress nomination for Danielle Brooks and missing ensemble when it, it totally should have gone into ensemble. Yes. You know, so I I want I agree with what you said about poor things. So I don't know what to replace it with. <laughs> what are your options? I mean, like air. I, I I had air too before I dropped it for American Fiction like three months ago. So I could put air back in. I mean, like you're saying, color purple. I think Iron Claw too is like a tailor made. I, I agree about that too. But it's, it's too late. I mean, like if they got I I yeah. I mean, because they started screening that in November. They it did. wasn't done until then. No. And it's so, a very SAG-friendly movie, it feels like. Yes. And it's a family movie, which is, I think, usually a great sign for SAG. They love families. Yes, they love families. And it's emotional. They love emotion, too. And, and it's, that was why I put American Fiction in there and kept it in, because I was like, it's a, it's the it's family. a family drama. It's a family movie. Um, I don't know. So I, what... I mean, you could keep poor things because it's like, yeah. Like I, I also wouldn't be surprised if poor things got in, yeah. Either, but um, uh, I don't know. Like, what else? What if Saltburn gets in? Well, I almost put Saltburn in. I'm not lying, and I, I might put it in somewhere else. Uh, because How I about think... past lives. I mean, not not much of an ensemble. That's well, another I, first situation. I thought that too because I might have that elsewhere. Also, I don't know if I will, but I was like. 
I don't, again, it's a three hander. I don't think it's going to get in. I just don't think those are going to get in. Okay. I'm going to do air. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. This is great. <laughs> I don't know. Watch it just be the color purple. It but. could. I mean, very easily could get in. It would make sense that, like we're saying, it would make sense that it would get in. But I do think it was late and I'm not convinced. I'd like to be proven wrong on that, but I'm just not convinced it's going to show up. It hasn't, and also is underperformed at every guild so far. Yeah, like that's the thing. It, it missed costumes, it missed set deck last and week. And those are like the best aspects of the movie. I know. Too. And that's either because it was too late or because they just are not taking to this movie. So, yeah. And then, you know, it, it just made um, actress and supporting actress on the BAFTA long list too. But uh, it, it was never expected to do well with BAFTA. It's just not their thing. So, no. But, uh, but yeah, for... the guild, the guild ig ignorance or, you know, ignoring them, that's more concerning than the BAFTA misses. Pretty tough. Uh, for film actress choice, I have Lily Gladstone, Emma Stone, Margot Robbie, Carrie Mulligan, and Natalie Portman. I have Lily, Emma, Margot, Annette Benning, and Carrie. Okay. I think that's the top five. That's the top five. I, I pop Natalie up from way down. I just feel like actors are going to love that monologue and her performance, and she's playing an actor, and I think while... And that is classic SAG elder statesman actress doing a transformation. I don't think people care about that movie. I just don't. I had Natalie and then I dro dropped her to put Annette back in. But now I'm just like, what if it's Carrie who misses? Like, what if this is another Michelle Williams situation? I absolutely think Carrie could miss. I have Carrie actually in fifth and I have. And yeah, I, I have her in fifth. <laughs> I have Natalie in fourth. I could see Carrie missing in place of Annette. Um, I'm not sure that Carrie's going to get in, but the thing that keeps me holding her on there is because even people who hate the movie, like your friend's dad, love her. Everyone loves her. Yeah. Uh, everyone. Everyone thinks she's great in the movie. She's the best part of the movie. Uh, so I just, and I think she's a And very she's the one who actually has the emotional arc in the third and, act. And she's also like an actor yeah. who people just like. Not that they don't like Annette Bening or any of these other contenders, but I'm like, people love Carrie Mulligan. I just think she'll get in. But I wouldn't, if she missed, I would not be shocked. Also, um, Nyad has been a guild fave. I know. It's had a good week last week. It has. So, even like, uh, rude of the makeup branch to snub it on the short list. So, I guess it still maybe remains to be seen if people care about a net in it. I don't know. I mean, maybe they will. I just think it's kind of, <clears throat> you know, such such a, a a mainstream appealing movie. It's so like down the middle. When I saw it at, at Telluride, I was like, I actually think this can get in for best picture and like the bottom of the best picture field. It, and it's in a weaker year, it would not have been. Totally... And also she made the BAFTA long list, which I don't think many people expect no. it. And I, I would say she was top seven because it's yeah. it's top seven and then three jury picks to make the 10. I don't think a jury would have picked her. No, I mean, I definitely think she's like top seven. If she gets in, I would not be surprised. I just think that Natalie, maybe I should drop Carrie then, but I'm like worried I'll get like too wrong. If I do that, uh, too many wrong, but I do think, I think Natalie will get in. I just think, and also I think May December is like classic actor movie. It is. Um, and I feel bad that I, uh, spoiler alert, dropped it down to just one. Wow. So, cause I had all three of them at wow. one point, but yeah, like I think Lily, Emma and Margo should get in here fine. Um, as I've said before, I don't expect Sandra Huller to get in here, but she'll be fine for the Oscar nomination. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for drama actor, or for drama, for film actor, Joyce, sorry. It's late. I'm blaming my writers. Yeah. Uh, but also, I, I thought about Greta Lee, too. I wow. almost put her in also. And it's early, and it's a SAG thing, and yeah. I could see her getting in, too. Um, maybe I'll drop... Carrie for Greta? Yeah just go really wrong i'm gonna do this just to be an idiot <laughs> but i could totally see her getting in because there's a lot of passion behind almost, that performance yeah. and then it's I, almost I, 1 a.m i'm gonna do this <laughs> <laughs> so i have i have the top three and then i have natalie and greta sure let's do it <laughs> i almost did it before i'm like eh, who cares I, I i do think greta <clears throat> has a better chance of getting at the oscars than at sag 
but I think I thought that too, but you can definitely get in at SAG. Also, I just think the fact that it's a, my case for it before I just did it now half-assed, but was that it's an early movie that I think yeah. people really liked. And she, we laughed at this. I think somebody asked this about the morning show, but I mean, she does have a, like a lot of visibility, I guess, among Are you going to predict her on TV too? <laughs> no, but I, I think that morning show will do really well on TV side, so. Jennifer Aniston posted a screen. I know, I know. This weekend, so. Uh, for film drama, uh, for film actor, Jesus Christ. I have uh I'm thinking about the globes. I know. I have Killian Murphy, Paul Giamatti, Bradley Cooper, Jeffrey Wright, and Coleman Domingo, and I left Leo out. I just have to ask her five. Killian, okay. Paul, Bradley, Leo, and Jeffrey. This is maybe like th- like we were saying about like Bradley. This is like Coleman Domingo's, I feel like last stand and like in terms of getting a nomination or being competitive for a nomination. I just think that he's such a, again, I'm going with like actors who like actors, not that they don't like Leo because he's Leo, but I could see Coleman getting in here. I think this is like the yeah. best chance he has to get in. Um, For sure. It's, it's, it's very, it's a very uh SAG friendly film yes, yes. and performance more so than Maestro. Yes. Um, My only concern is, is that it has been a non-starter. Like, Correct. I feel like, more people have seen and talked about Nyad. He he's frankly he said that. He said that to Ava DuVernay. He's like, no one's seen this movie. Yeah, I'm, that frankly, said that. Yeah. I'm frankly shocked how few people have seen this movie. So I should probably just stick with the Oscar five and Leo, but I'll just go down the ship with Coleman. I had him in here the whole time. So I'm just like, I'll just, I'll just take a loss. Here. And then you'll feel stupid if you yeah. go off him and he gets in. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I know people want Zac Efron to happen. No. There's just no be, room. It would be great, but I don't. I don't really see it. There's no room. Yeah, and then I don't really think Andrew Scott would make it in here. Like he's sort of like Greta Lee, although I think Greta has a better chance. Like I think he has a better chance of getting at the Oscars than at SAG. I think that's true. So, um, for supporting actress, I have uh, Devon Joy Rand, uh, Devon Joy Randolph, Daniel Brooks, Emily Blunt, America Ferrara, and Rosamund Pike. I have Davine, Emily, America, Danielle, and Jody Foster for Nyad. I'm all out on Nyad, uh, but Jody, she probably could easily get in. I went with Rosman because I'm just like, you know what movie is great, Saul? <laughs> and, uh, you know who people I, think, love? I thought about her too, and I, I feel like she can get in here and also have the Oscars. I can um, see her getting in the Oscars, but I could also see her being like the Jared Leto here of just like making these and then just not getting in at the end. Um, yeah, the the classic uh, Globe and SAG snub. Yeah, uh, and it just feels so. like right. Everyone loves her in the movie as well. Yeah, that also feels like a very saltburn thing to happen. It feels like another Nocturnal Animals, although that did get in for Michael Shannon at the yeah. end. Yeah. So, but uh, not left- Aaron, not Golden Globe winner Aaron Taylor Johnson. So no, I left out Julianne Moore, who I still think is getting in the Oscars after performing so well on the BAFTA list. Uh, I, I had to drop her to put America in and I felt bad about it because I also considered dropping Jody, but again, I feel like Nyad is just, you know, sag basic, like very basic appealing. Yeah. And, uh, so I did that and I, I also did just, I, I did think about not having Danielle Brooks too, if color purple really flops, but I kept her. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you you also didn't you put in Taraji a couple of weeks ago? I had I mean, her. You know, you had her already. I had her in there already, and I finally dropped her because I was like, she missed the BAFTA list. She lost the Emmy. I'm just like, it's not a great week. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> Different project. I was like, you're out. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, and, uh, not not a great week. No, for her. Uh, for for and finally for supporting actor. I have Downey, Gosling, Ruffalo, Dominic Sessa, and Robert Down, uh, Robert De Niro. Excuse me. So I did drop Charles Melton. Uh, I have Downey, Gosling, Ruffalo, De Niro, and I do have Charles Melton. Nice. I think Sessa is getting in because I think Holdovers is a movie to me that feels like the most. It, it's like a SAG home run. And I don't think it would get an ensemble, but I think all three of the actors could get in. Yeah, it totally reads like individual noms and not ensemble. 
I and, do want to put him in, but I don't know who to drop to get him in. Like, it, it would have to, to be Charles, I guess. It would have to be Charles, I guess. I just couldn't have Charles and Dominic in there. I don't think that's likely. Um, it's it's more likely here than at the Oscars, I think. I think people really like De Niro, though. And I think they like him. In, I mean, obviously, he's great in the movie. Yeah, like, I have the four, the consensus four. And then it's the last mm-hmm. slot. I think, yeah, like, I think Holdovers is the more liked film. Um, But SAG loves Netflix. And there's... How how many people in the nomcom do you think watched Riverdale? Probably a lot. They love second Reggie. <laughs> I mean, it was probably a pretty watchable show. I don't know. I don't know because I felt like people are probably more familiar with Charles. Like Charles has been in the business for a while. Yeah, he might be new to like film Twitter people and Oscar voters, but yeah, you know, he's been around. This this ain't his first rodeo. It's his first award season rodeo. Right. But so I feel like maybe. SAG voters might be more familiar with him, like the nomcom people. Whereas like, to... Dominic is a complete newcomer too. I'm only putting Dominic in because I just think the movie he the people love the movie. I just get the sense that people love the movie. They do. And I actually I feel like even if Charles gets in here and Dominic doesn't, I can see myself predicting Dominic for the Oscar over Charles because Holdovers is the stronger movie. And he missed Bafta and Dominic got in. Yeah. Uh, on the TV side, Joy. So that's it. So we have air. We both have air. I love that we circled back to air. <laughs> they deserve it. You know what? Come it's on. great. Great it. ensemble. Great movie. Uh, for TV, Joyce. For drama ensemble, I have Succession, The Morning Show in second place, Last of Us, The Crown, and The Gilded Age. The Gilded Age. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> I have Succession, The Crown, The Morning Show, The Last of Us, and The Diplomat. Okay. So we went with the next. That was my other choice. The next in the odds are Yellow Jackets in 1923. I'm not going to say I would eat a shoe if if Yellow Jackets makes it in, but I'm not very confident that it will get in. Yellow Jackets probably deserves to get in, but I feel like it won't. It just feels it's fifty odds, but I'm like, man, that show is completely out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm I'm happy that the Globes remembered Christina Ricci to nominate her, you know, but it kind of flatlined at kind of it did really flat, like it didn't it didn't improve at the Emmys for season two. Um, it just wasn't very well liked in season two. It seems like yeah, and, and 1923 is next, and I'm like, no, I, everybody keeps trying to make it happen, but I don't believe it. I thought about it, but it's not yellowstone right and though so i went with gilded age which is next in the odds and i'm like it just feels like obviously like an heir apparent to downton abbey i guess i don't know i was just like and people like it's all like new york actors i'm just like they're it's a big ensemble like it's all people who've worked with a million other people i just put it in the diplomat great pick because it's on netflix and incredibly popular so that's basically why i did it because it is successful and it's um been embraced you know already we've seen like carrie got in at the emmys you know and it's it was quickly renewed by netflix for season two um and it's like it it's it's like it's like a high middle brow show sort of yeah you know what i mean like i think when it premiered in the spring i said that it it felt like a broadcast drama on like ABC from 12 years ago, yeah. you know, like Tuesdays at 10 yes. or something that was just wildly successful. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I can see it getting in. I, like I said, I just went with the Gilded Age. So I was like, it just, I feel like everyone in the show is someone I've seen in a million other things. And I was like, it maybe was on at the right time. People seemingly like this. Like, yeah, latest- they, they do. Um, and then it renewed for season three. Right. So, um, for, TV drama actor, I just went top five in the odds. I have Kieran, Jeremy, Matthew, and then Pedro Pascal and Billy Crudup. So I have Kieran, Jeremy, Pedro, Brian Cox, and Matthew. Wow. I have four succession and one Pedro. (laughs) Wow. Uh, 
<laughs> Man, you know, you left out Billy Crudup for the I had show. Billy, and then I, I, I just dropped him. Wow. Uh, that would be awesome. I'd love to see that. I can totally see it happening. Because be before, great. before I, I had, I had Billy instead of Brian. Yeah. And then I'm just like, you know what they love? Getting exactly. in everywhere. Yeah. And like people, like they love the show. So, like they, like in nominations, like they have the slots to just nominate their faves. From their they favorite could. Show. I just think their faves, one of the faves is going to be Billy. I think people love him and they love him in this character. Yeah, like I wouldn't be surprised if he got in at all. Like I think it's more realistic that he gets in than for Pedro. for succession guys to get in. Yeah, I guess. Maybe. But I, I, I can totally see this happening. And then I don't know. I didn't really consider anyone else. Like, Dominic it's, West. It's just too crowded with succession people. Yeah. The only other person I thought it was Brian Cox, but I was like, I'm not putting four succession people in here. But I did. <laughs> so. It's great. Uh, <laughs> for drama actress, I'm also boring. I have the top five in the odds. Sarah Snook, Bella Ramsey, Elizabeth Elizabeth Debicki, Jennifer Aniston, and Carrie Russell. This I do have the top five, so yes. Although I did think about <clears throat> having Imelda in there, but I don't know who to drop. And I think the only person I would drop is Jen. I thought of having Emma Stone in here as well, but I don't think that would happen. No, I think that's like the curse is not a SAG show. Come on, no, but she's a famous actor. Who people... I uh, no, I they 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 still need to watch. That's the thing. That's like true. they they don't just go on buzz. Um, I also thought about Helen Mirren, or nineteen twenty three. Could happen. Uh, for comedy ensemble, I have the Bear, Ted Lasso, Abbott, Jury Duty, and Only Murders. The top five in the odds, basically. I do too. It pains me to leave my beloved Barry out, but I don't see it. Okay. Do you think shrinking can get in? Um, probably not. So that's the the thing of shrinking is like it's just been getting in individually. Yeah. For not Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh Bear or Ted Lasso here. What do you think wins? I have the bear. This is interesting because the re- I think Ted Lasso season three, while obviously not as successful as season one and two, to be diplomatic about it. Uh, the Bear season one, I don't, I think is good, but not nearly as good as season two. And so but at this, the Emmys- But this is for season two. Correct. And I'm like, I think it's just going to steam, I think the Bear would just steamroll Ted here with season two. I think pound for pound, season two is better than season three yeah. of Ted. So, but if it was like season one, I, that's why at the Emmys, I'm like, I think Ted could still win and over the bear season one and the thing is is like ted has only won this once because um it lost the first time to schitt's creek yeah for its last season um last year it wasn't eligible and abbott won and beat the bear which we expected so i don't think it'll win again i just think the bear's too hot right now yeah so um i think i'll just win um and then yeah, like I think Abba will get nominated again, only murders, and then jury duty makes sense as a nominee. It'll be cool if they won, because it's so many. Like, I mean, that's that's such a true like SAG cast because there's so many unknown people, you know? Yes. It's not just stars. So, but I don't think they'll win. <clears throat> uh for comedy actor Joyce, this one I had a real tough time with, and I don't know. I have Jeremy, at least at the bottom. I have Jeremy Allen White, Jason Sudeikis, Bill Hader, Martin Short, and I put in Evan Moss Backrack instead of James Morrison. Um, I have Jeremy, Martin, Jason, Bill, and Evan. I don't have James. You don't have James either. Wow. I never had him. I had him and I dropped him for Evan because I was just like, Bear Season 2. You know who rules in Bear Season 2? Evan Moss Backrack. Like he would obviously get nominated. I think I would actually drop Bill to get James in. I actually think that too, because the others I just don't imagine. I don't think Martin Short would get knocked out for this. Yeah, so. I mean, like I wouldn't drop Evan to get James in. <clears throat> no. But I I want Bill to get in, so I'm kind of hope dicting Bill. <laughs> He's not gonna win, but <laughs> um I let's fl- flash back to last year when Anthony Kerrigan got in. Like slow yeah. clap. For that they, nomcom nominated. yeah they like they like i know but it's a different nomcom because i know you're different so i don't know um 
yeah I could see James getting in I don't know I feel like they'll just like the bear and then just do Jeremy and Evan yeah so um for comedy actress I have Iowa Debris Meryl Streep Quinta Brunson Hannah Waddingham and Natasha Leone. Uh, I have Io, Quinta, Rachel, Hannah, Waddingham, and Meryl. So you have top five in the odds. Yes. I dropped Rachel on the account that people like Natasha Leon. And I love Rachel Brosnan. I think she could win the Emmy, but I was like, I don't know, looking to be different here, I guess. I, I don't know who's going to win that comedy actress Emmy. <laughs> I have Natasha and Jenna Ortega one too after how the show's performed at the Creative Arts Emmys. You you love to, Jane. Remember flashback to last week when you said you're not going to change anything. I was so cool. Creative Jane. Arts. I like was you so did this foolish. every year. You went I'm to changed. Thomas Brody Sangster for the Queen's Gambit. Yes. Because of Creative Arts. And I was like, why? <laughs> how dare you abandon Evan Peters? Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't know who to... I feel like... Rachel Brosnan would make a lot of sense, obviously, at SAG, but I think Natasha Leon is, like, ripe for a nomination here. I could see Hannah Waddingham missing, but also when I did that SAG panel with Ted Lasso, you know who people love is Hannah Waddingham. They just love her. Yeah. So uh, I don't think she would miss. Do you think Quinta Brunson could miss? She's first in the US. I think that's only because IO moved to lead in yeah. November. And yeah. People haven't updated. I mean, it doesn't, who cares, like, for nominations, so. Right. Um, um, I don't No, I don't think she would miss. I think she'd get in, but uh I don't think she wins. She didn't win last year. Remember Jean Smart won? Yep. Um so yeah, I I think Rachel is okay. I, I think like they I think they still like Maisel. I'm talking about just like the industry, not just SAG. Um, and remember, like, they gave Maisel Ensemble over Fleabag. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and I feel like they haven't forgotten about Maisel for its final season. So I think she can still it. would be, it. I mean, she was like, so I think it's like, it's like the bigger show than Poker Face. Yeah, but I was like, maybe Poker Face actually got penetration. I don't know. Because Judith Light won the Emmy. <laughs> well, I mean, like, it definitely was the biggest thing that Peacock, is like, it was definitely the most popular thing, I think, or in terms of, like, people paying attention to and for Peacock. Yeah. So, it's possible. And, like, another actor, I just was like, and Rachel Brosnan would count on this, too, but I'm like, Natasha Leone's another actor who's worked with everybody, feels like, and, like, people really like. So, it's a po popularity contest, in all, addition to being a yeah, your performance is really good. She would have like an, another advantage there. I mean, Rachel has won before. Yeah, and no, I know. So I I think like it's still the bigger show, even though the show is over. Right. Um, and like like I think Natasha can get in, but I think that's also just a, a weaker show. Too, yeah. So. Uh, for limited series movie actor one of the people i actually want to predict we cannot predict uh i was wondering if he's even eligible lewis pullman for lessons in chemistry would he he would be in this category right well yeah because it's the only one but he's not like he wouldn't be like a guest or anything right he's like an actual like full i don't know actor. how many episodes was he in because he uh, he exits the show <laughs> I think he actually get nominated, but I can't predict them. So my top, my five are uh, Stephen Young, uh, John Hamm, Matt Bomber, Mark Ruffalo, and Sam Sam Claflin. This is top five in the odds. This I don't really know what to do here. Um, outside of Stephen. Um. So I I have Stephen, John, Sam, David Oyelowo. Lawman, Thass Reeves, and Mark Ruffalo. Nice. I thought about Matt Bomer, but I don't know who I would drop to put him in. Not that I'm confident in any of these other people. <laughs> I don't, I'm not confident all in Ruffalo, actually. He's like the weakest one to me. Oh, no, I'm not confident. Like, it's, I, I just have him in there because he's won this twice before. 
What if they go to Woody like the Globes did? I mean, I thought about it. I think he can get in for sure. Um, like I said, I think Lewis. I Coleman think the only person safe here is Stephen. So. Yeah, and Stephen's gonna win. <laughs> so, um, and then for actress in the same category, I have Ali Wong, Brie Larson, Riley Keough, Catherine Hahn, and Juno Temple. I have Ali, Riley, Brie, Elizabeth Olsen for Love and Death, and Catherine Hahn. Nice. I love the new season of Fargo, so I was like, I'm putting her in. Juno. Juno, she didn't she didn't go to the Globes tonight. She never was at any of these things. She wasn't at the SAG thing either. I love she it. Was busy. It's just a, another, like, Maggie Smith in the making here. Great. And I have Allie winning this, so. Obviously. So. Uh, so those are our SAG picks. A lot of differences. I could really bomb out. I'm loving this. I love when we could bomb. When I could bomb. I, I really want a, a totally SAG move in a category. What would be the most SAG? Um, I don't even know. Um, I don't like on the TV side. I mean, I think it can definitely happen in the limited categories just because I, I don't think. I mean, I think Riley is probably pretty safe in actress. I think she's more safe than Sam. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it'll be actually cool if they did Carla Gugino for Fall of the House of Usher. Um, they could do anything. It, it, it's like this category is absolutely insane. Feels what like. if they did your beloved Sydney Sweeney? Box office yeah. queen. Love Sydney to see Sweeney. it. She was so good in reality. Truly a great performance. Uh, Joyce, it's so late. It's after 1 a.m. here on the East Coast, but we're going to do two emails. Uh, this one is uh, from from Rikari, who writes, do you think the Critics' Choice Awards will go with the person who has won? Won what? The Pick Globes? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's say that. The Globes. If <laughs> you think they'll just go with who won at the Globes. It, was this sent tonight? No, it was sent last week. I'm 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 assuming they mean the globes. Yes. Um yeah, I mean that's usually what happens. Right? Where do you think so, wait, what... let, let me when they're I think their voting closes like Friday or something. What Hold would on. be one where they go different? Um Okay, wait. So they're yeah, voting closes Friday, January 12th. Okay. So different. Um, I need to pull up there. I'm looking at. Let's just do the film. I'm looking at it right now. Best picture would be Oppenheimer. It's first in the odds. Nolan for director. Lily Gladstone for actress. Best actor could be. So I think Bradley's they'll just do first. Killian. They'll just do Killian. I think. I think it'll be Killian or Paul. Same. Uh, Downey instead of Gosling. But like you said, this this is probably Ryan's last stand. Barbie got 18 nominations. But now they're voting after it lost. Yeah, after it won one. So, Asterisk. like, I don't think it's going to win screenplay. And I actually don't think it's going to win, like, I don't know. I could see winning ensemble. It's or the color, Or do they give it to Color Purple or Flower Moon? Or often, I mean, their their ensemble winners can actually be kind of interesting. So, but yeah, I think they'll probably just do RDJ. Yeah, and the supporting actress, obviously, Devine. So, I can actually see Flower Moon winning ensemble. I I know there's no Golden Globe for it, but maybe I don't know. Um. Yeah, and then original screenplay again. They can't give it to Anatomy of a Fall. I think they'll go with uh, holdovers there. Yeah, I mean, I could see Barbie winning it just because, like, they they also have the out because it's they have an original, it's not adapted, and then they can copy the Globes anyway. Right. So it doesn't matter. Um, I could see. Celine Song winning too for past lives, but I would put that third behind Holdovers and Barbie. 
So basically just rubber stamping through. I know. Well then adapted. Um they I don't hmm. I can't actually see any of these winning and adapted. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. All the strangers, American fiction, poor things, Oppenheimer, Killers with Flower Moon. I think Poor Things is in first, but I actually think it's among, based on that group, I actually think it's a little divisive among this group. So I could see like some like American fiction winning. Yeah, I could see American fiction um, or all of the strangers. I don't know if they would do Oppie or Flower Moon here. They could also just do Margaret because again, it doesn't matter. Right. But yeah. Uh, so and then last score score is yeah I think it'll do Oppie and song Philly a lot of rubber stamping yeah and then like we said before anatomy of fall for foreign language I guess the one they could deviate on animated feature they could just do Spidey a lot of them love Spidey they're big Spidey fans yeah they love it, it. went into Astra's I guess so I don't know mm-hmm. that was also last night and a lot of things were happening on Saturday <laughs> uh last one here email us at slugfest at goldderby.com it's from chris not my burner hi joyce and chris first time emailer here i just want to say i love the podcast especially how long they are most of these other award par- podcasts can barely break 30 minutes and here you are fluctuating between an hour and two hours so much content for my commute to work Anyway, I was curious about your thoughts on some of the fringe contenders this year, particularly which single Oscar nomination seems most possible likely for each. Here are the movies I'm thinking of. Saltburn. I'm just going to read them and we could do this in order. Uh, Saltburn. I have it in for screenplay and I think Rosman could get in for supporting actress, but I think it'll actually get in for screenplay. I think those are both possible. What if they both get in? Would be great. What if I, get, think... I could see it also. It's a... I think it's a dark horse for production design too. That's a tough category. But great production design, beautiful production design. The thing is, not a, the BAFTA stuff was like surprising, I think, for some people that it did so but well. Not, not really. It's such a BAFTA film. And not also, also like a lot of people like, like the movie. They also hate the movie. There's a lot of people who hate it. But a it's, lot of people actually like- do like it. And it is like very well the all the aspects of it I think are very well done. So I think I think screenplay though is like a leg, now that Barbie's in the out of that category I think it's like a legitimate option for a nomination. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I. Yeah, I think it's like probably like with Barbie gone, like its best shot is probably screenplay. Yeah. So. Uh, next one was Napoleon. One of the crafts, I think, like costume. I currently have it in for costume. Yeah, that can totally happen. I also have it in for sound and visual effects. Um. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I I think I also have it in production design. Do I? I don't even know. I don't know. Uh, it's not doing well, but I think those aspects could actually do well. Yeah, I think because because you know I I had the color purple in those two categories, costume and production design, and I dropped it. I've gone with Wonka in those categories. I yeah, so I do have Napoleon in costume design and production design. It felt like to me, I think of those, I think costume is actually its best shot. I also think visual effects too could make it in. But I was like, when you think of that movie, you're like, oh, you know, it's great. The costumes. People love costume. They dramas. made 4,000 costumes. <laughs> so I think it can actually easily get in there. Uh, the other one, he had another few. Iron Claw. Screenplay. That's its, I think that's its only hope. I don't have it in anywhere else. I don't even have it in for screenplay, um, but maybe. Because it's, it's not a real crafty film. I think it should have actually been on the short list for score and song, but it, it, but it wasn't, wasn't. So, All the Strangers? It was screenplay. 
I guess it still is screenplay. I don't know. Maybe you could say actor if you really think Andrew. People are hot on high on Andrew. Andrew. Uh... Yeah. Well, he he won National Society, so people feel emboldened. Yeah. So. Uh, the killer. I did have it in sound for like two weeks, but I've since dropped it. The BAFTA just near blanking is a tough sell. Yeah. Just adapted screenplay long list. I know. Couldn't so, even get sound. The sound the sound was so good. Uh our beloved film Wonka. Costumes probably. Um or production design. I, I don't I don't have it in anywhere. I have it in for production design only. I did have it in costumes, but I no longer. Uh I love love this movie. And then another movie that I think could have done better on the long lists. Or short lists, sorry. Yeah. And long lists. I mean, like, it could have yeah. done better on the Oscar short list. Yes, on the Oscar short list. That's what I meant. Yeah. Uh and then fi- uh air. Screenplay. Definitely screenplay. Like what what else? <laughs> I don't know. I think I think we've all uh, kind of moved off of Viola Davis, supporting actress. And then the last one was Godzilla minus one, and, and Chris, effects. Chris writes obviously visual effects, but could it hit somewhere else too? I just saw this one, and the crafts overall are excellent. Would love to see production designer costumes. I don't, I don't think so, but I don't think so. Sadly, no. Any other like lone nominees? Like May December could be just a lone nominee for screenplay, right? Yeah, if it doesn't get any acting. And you would rank right now, Julianne. And then Charles and then Natalie? Or would you actually do Natalie ahead of Charles? So I, I've never put Charles in. I still don't have it okay. in. Um, I would put him ahead of Natalie. I think Just Julianne... He's, he's hit more things than she has. Yeah. So. But I think Julianne feels like pretty set. I hope so. Um, I would love to see her get an Afterglow nomination. Finally. Um, she she feels like she's okay like she was only one of them to make the BAFTA long list she could have been a jury save um but again I just dropped her from SAG (laughs) so I don't know that that whole category after Davine I mean I think Emily's probably safe but it's just so chaotic tough yeah uh all right choice so that was it we'll wrap this up and we'll be back when later this week to do our Emmy pick. We have SAG and, SAG and then Emmy predictions. Can't wait. All right. Well, let's get this up and go to bed. I'll talk to you then. <laughs> Bye.